Is Connor Zilich about to race full-time for JRM in the Xfinity Series next year? Plus, will the Chicago Street Race be back in 2025? Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. The racing prodigy that is Connor Zilich is in talks with Junior Motorsports about a full time NASCAR Xfinity Series ride for the 2025 season. Like, man, this is awesome. Well, I don't necessarily know if Connor is having those conversations. He is 17 years old after all. I think his uh, team over at Trackhouse is probably having the conversations with JRM. Apparently, Trackhouse isn't going to mess around with college racing on this one. They're going to put, like I said, the prodigy into the best Chevy equipment that's available in the Xfinity Series up to this point. So, Connor Zilich, like I said, He's a racing prodigy. The kid's won in literally everything he's ever gotten in. I caught a lot of flack on the internet for saying that he has a more diverse racing resume than Max Verstappen does at this point, and he absolutely does. Max has only ever raced karts and then open wheel formula. Connor Zilich is willing to get into anything and everything up to this point. He's driven multiple different styles of cars, and he's won in literally everything. He's a national karting champion. He's won in MX-5. He's won in Trans Am. He's won in the Arca Series, two wins in his first three starts. He probably should have won in the Truck Series if he doesn't blow that first corner and watch his day unravel from there he's also an lmp2 winner and this year alone he's won the 24 hours of daytona in the lmp2 class as well as the 12 hours of sebring the kid wins and everything he gets in oh not to mention he's also a cars tour uh, late model stock winner this year as well so like i said kind of wins in everything that he gets in at this point so him moving up to the xfinity series isn't really a shock now he will be making his xfinity series debut later this year at watkins Glen after he turns 18 and then he'll also be racing at kansas homestead and phoenix as well in the 88 car for jrm so now it sounds like his team over at Trackhouse is having conversations with JRM to put him into a car full time. And that honestly makes a lot of sense. And I said this as well on Twitter before. Trackhouse is going to put a lot of money into developing this kid just to watch him go win a cup championship at Hendrick in the future. And I still stand by that. I think that he's ultimately destined to end up at Hendrick Motorsports at some point in his career here. But Connor Zilich by all accounts, is that five-star prospect that can't miss the next big guy. Is he going to be Jimmy Johnson? Is he going to be Jeff Gordon? Uh, nah, who knows, right? It's so hard to predict that. I don't think we ever see another seven-time champ, especially with the way that the playoffs are certain or currently formatted. As it stands, it's just so difficult to try to get that to happen. But I think that he's definitely closer to those guys in terms of, of development rather than like a Casey Atwood or a Reed Sorensen or somebody that kind of had some hype around him then went bust when they made it up to the Cup Series. So yeah, Connor Zilich does win in everything that he gets in. Is he in great equipment? Yes, absolutely. The kid has uh, he has the talent level that attracts that good equipment. Now, when he gets up to the Xfinity Series, especially at Watkins Glen, that's not going to be a great test because we know that he's going to run well there, right? That just is assumed. He probably should have won the ARCA race there last year, and he almost did it with a broken sway bar as well, and Jesse Love had to get the bumper to him in the final turn to win that race. If not, Connor Zilich walks away with that. He already has two ARCA wins this year as well. Truck race, like I said, sat on pole uh, at Coda and then probably wins that race if he doesn't throw it away in the first corner <laughs> and then watch his day unravel. But the kid seemingly gets better each time he gets into a race car and he learns and he's constantly improving on himself. And I think that's a huge uh, benefit to having him in the car and to just his development overall. So Connor Zilich in talks with JRM to join full time. The biggest question is who moves out of that JRM stable? Of course, the Xfinity Series does not have a car limit like the Cup Series has. They can run five full time cars if they want to, assuming that their current roster of Justin Allgaier, Brandon Jones, Sam Mayer and Sammy Smith stays. They could run a fifth car if they absolutely wanted to. It does feel like one of those four is likely going to move on at the end of the year. Now, I don't necessarily know if they want to run five cars, but I would hate to see Carson Quaffle's chance at getting into the Xfinity Series full time come at the hands of Connor Zillage because I think both are talented in their own rights. I think Connor Zilch is probably more talented all around in every discipline, where I think Carson Quapple is really talented as an oval racer, and I would absolutely love to see him full-time in the Xfinity Series next year. So hopefully JRM can find some sponsorship and a budget and everything for him, and maybe run five cars if they want to, but if they don't want to run five, I understand it right from a business standpoint and from just a personnel standpoint and kind of stretching yourself too thin so it remains to be seen how all that is going to play out but Connor Zilich in talks with JRM now the next big question for 2025 is will the Chicago Street Course return for its third season now NASCAR does have a contract for three years which started in 2023 2024 and 2025 they signed that deal with the old mayor Lori Lightfoot and her and all the other weird things that she did I'm sure Chicago is probably happy to move on from her but she certainly gave NASCAR a sweetheart deal the new mayor 
Mayor Brandon Johnson doesn't really love the fact that NASCAR got a sweet deal out of this, but did seem to come around on the idea of this race after the inaugural event last year. And now that they have a good event this year, it, to, it seems to be that he might be inclined to, you know, confirm 2025. A spokesperson for uh, Chicago did say that a decision for 2025 will be made in the upcoming weeks about whether or not this race will return. So as part of the contract, NASCAR and Chicago can cancel their portion of the deal. They can back out of the deal uh, with 180 days notice. So they can do it. Uh, I don't think NASCAR necessarily wants to, but you know, Chicago could if they wanted to. But after last year's event, this year's event, which does currently look like it will run in sunshine and dry and not a biblical rainstorm like we saw in 2023, should certainly give Chicago an even bigger economic impact than what we saw last year. So the track says, or the event rather, said that last year they had like 40 to 50-ish thousand people there for the event. Now they're expecting 100,000 people for the weekend. And the economic impact last year was a little over $100 million, plus like over $20 million in media exposure for the city, which that's an impressive amount right there. Throw in the fact that it was a monsoon the entire weekend. The rain literally just hung out over Chicago until like Sunday afternoon, finally, when it started to relent. This year, you have to assume having a sunny weekend, a an event that's not impacted by rain, is going to help out a ton. Now, last year's event, people, of course, went into it and they're like, we're going to get robbed. It's too dangerous, this and that. Certain spotters all had that idea in their brain and the event went off without a hitch a ton of crew members were like it was really cool to just walk from the hotel to the racetrack which it certainly will be i'll be there for the event next weekend i'm super excited to be staying at the hotel that overlooks the racetrack so i can just literally walk out the door and to the racetrack that is super enticing to get people to go to an event and i'm excited to see how it's going to play out so you have crew members talking about how it was a good time Obviously, you have a good public transit system in Chicago. People can get around. They can go to different events. You have the concerts, which didn't happen last year, should happen this year. So that should be exciting in itself. The whole event seems like a win for NASCAR. And of course, NASCAR wants to continue this along. They are spending around $50 million on track setup and everything that goes along with putting this event on. That is a big spin for sure. But you also have to assume that the TV partners want to have a marquee event like this on their portion of the schedule come 2025. So you can expect Chicago to stay around, at least from a NASCAR standpoint. And now it depends on whether or not Chicago wants to keep it. Last year, we heard all of the excuses from the aldermen, their version of city council, you know, the people that take their jobs entirely too seriously, that were like, it's going to shut down businesses. People can't get to their homes. It's impacting traffic too much. And it really didn't. Now it's in its second year and everybody just isn't really even batting an eye at it. NASCAR has streamlined the setup and teardown process, which is going to cut a ton of time off of the amount of road closures that they had from last year to this year. And NASCAR also pay, agreed to pay an additional $2 million this year as well to cover the police costs that the city had to cover last year, which they didn't really, or at least weren't really happy for. I don't know if they didn't account for it, but they weren't happy about it. So at the end of the day, this event is one that should continue to exist for NASCAR, and hopefully it does come back for 2025. There's also an option for 26 and 27 as well, and it's a unique thing, right? It's a it's a it's a must-watch TV event. It's the only race of its kind on the schedule this year, and. It's interesting. Last year, it introduced the NASCAR fans, at least maybe the people that don't watch V8 Supercar or Australian Supercar, whatever you want to refer to it as, uh, to Shane Van Gisbergen and what a talent he is. And now he's over here full time. So, uh, yeah, I think it's definitely a win for NASCAR. I think it's a win for Chicago as well, right? I do, what I wouldn't be going to Chicago in the summertime uh, or really at any point, you know, if it wasn't for this event. And everybody talks about how great a Chicago summer is. So I'm excited to go check it out for the weekend and see how all of it goes. So if you're going, let me know. Maybe we can all meet up at the track. But let me know in the comments what you think about the Connor Zilich possibly signing with JRM as well as the Chicago Street Course. Should it come back for a third season? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.